Welcome to the Billionaire Lifestyle Podcast with your host, Emmett Muckles. Please visit iTunes, Stitcher, or EmmettMuckles.com to listen to all the episodes for free. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Billionaire Lifestyle Podcast with Emmett Buckles. Guess what? I'm going to say it again. I'm going to say it and say it and say it till you understand what it is. Today is the day that you have been given. You started from right now. Yesterday is gone. And you are a magician. You want to know how you're a magician? Because you can predict the future. I know you're probably like, Emmett is crazy, but I'm telling you the truth. And here's how it works. Because you have imagination and you put it with emotion and you can see what is going to happen tomorrow. You can say, I want to do this. You can start towards that and you can make it happen. Hence, you can predict the future because you are a billionaire. I'll explain that at the end of the show. And I've got a great guest here. You remember Body by Jake? Well, we're going to get you a Body by Jake, except this is Jake Havra. What's up, Jake? <laughs> What's going on, man? Jeez, after that intro, I mean, you already got me fired up. That's that's my type of lingo that you've been sharing right there. <laughs> Jake, I'm going to ask you the question that I ask everyone, because it's so very important to understand who you're working with you know people don't just deal with brands nowadays brands equal a lifestyle with a person has brought to the earth so what brought you to now man i mean you know ever since i was a kid dude it 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 was this thing that you know people unravel what they're trying to figure out in life obviously as a kid i didn't understand my purpose in life but what i realized is it's always about some way of serving some way of helping people whether it was you know obviously in basketball you know, like just becoming the best version so I could help my others. That's why I was in a team sport and not in tennis or something where I was only by myself uh, to then becoming a nurse and finding out that I'm trying to help people get out of the hospital, right? And playing college basketball as well. Then I just didn't find that alignment so much. And now here I am keeping people out of the hospital, transforming their lives. And once again, helping them because that's that's what's brought me today, man, is it gives me fulfillment to see other people succeed. So, you know, it's, it's you bringing up the fact that you are, were a nurse. We are consistently seeing this uh, scenario on the planet where, you know, nurses are talking about people who don't have optimum health. They are there to help these people. But sometimes there's nothing they can do because they're too far gone or they're just just gone enough. And you get a situation where we have COVID come in and they can't recover. Mm. What was your experience like and, and what motivated you? How does it tie into what you do now? Yeah, yeah. So being a nurse or, you know, graduating as a nurse and obviously being in the hospitals working, man, I mean, first off, we're here saving other people's lives as a nurse. And I... I can, you know, acknowledge and condone every single nurse and healthcare worker out there that is going over time. Like, I, I, it's, it's so hard to imagine that already when you're doing 16 hour shifts, now you're probably going 24 hour Ooh. certain days. But the thing that tore me down as a nurse being my, one myself is when these people would come in, whether they were awake or not, coma or, you know, fully alert, and they had this life threatening preventable illness or disease or something that could have been prevented, but because of their actions or circumstances, whatever it was, we're here to save their life. Yeah. And, you know, then we're over here resuscitating them, bring them back to life, you know, they're in cardiac rest. And now they come back and they're like, Jake, like, gosh, like, I mean, what do I do? You know, basically whether they're frantic or not, I tell them, all right, don't eat that anymore. Start working out here. Uh, start taking these prescriptions, whatever. And, and they have this mentality of, of course, anything. Yes. I, cause what happened, I mean, is that they faced death and sometimes people don't really truly acknowledge the beauty of life until they see the contrast of what they almost had. Yeah. And so, so I, I'd send them out. Right. And the thing that tore me down was a couple months later, dude, they would come back in same problem, same situation. You know, and it's and it's sad too because I mean, for some of the viewers, 
listening or some of the, the, the listeners is, you know, it's not just you that you're affecting yourself. It's your whole family. Say it again. Friends. You know, this, this impact. And I just, I, I'm just I, like, I'm all here on this, this, this podcast right now to speak truth. It's one of the most selfish things to not take care of your health because it's not just, well, okay, well, my time's over. Cause I've, I've seen it all right. I've heard it all. People be like, well, it's, I mean, it's my time's over. I'm not meant to be fit or healthy. Well, if you take off that, that uh, leadership, then your, your parents, your family, your kids, they're all going to get affected. They're going to start having the bad habits. And man, that's where it just made me change from instead of being in the hospital, trying to get them out. It's now keeping them out. And I just feel so aligned and uh, passionate about what I do. So you came up with Defined Body Academy. What was the what was the driving point? Because you were working in a healthcare profession, and you started to understand health equals wealth. Because if you don't have your health, you you can have all the money in the world. Your time is numbered. You can't spend it all. So, what was that point that you said? I'm going to make this jump. By the way, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> if you go to this guy's Instagram page, um, dudes. Don't let your woman see my man oh, on this. <laughs> She'd be like, ah, I got competition. No, but what, what, what was that point like when um, you said, you know, I can make a difference and I'm going to figure this out. I'm going to serve. Yeah. I mean, you hit the, you hit the nail on the head, dude. And it doesn't matter whether it's, and I saw this in my own dad's life and he's still here you know, and he's changing his health and he's been such a workhorse, but it started at a young age where he was working, 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 you know, great job, great, great opportunities, you know, taking care of me and my brother and sister, right. You know, I, I he's an amazing man, but I started to see the health go down. And I, it was at that point where I was, even at a young age, I was realizing, I was like, what is it worth? Because truth be told, if you're a billionaire and you have all the money, all the cars, all the things in the world, but you're sick, old, and can't walk or you struggle you're not a billionaire you're sick old and you you struggle to walk right it's like that that stuff doesn't fix it yes it could help it but you have to take care of your health because if you don't have your health what do you have you know and so it, it it hit me when i started to realize that people not only obviously feel better when they get their defined body not only do they look better but they actually perform better yeah because truth be told what i teach it's not like the most breakthrough things that no one's ever heard. But what I do is I get results. So when I named this, my, my academy, the Defined Body Academy, you know, this isn't CrossFit. This isn't yoga. This isn't where we're just in a hamster wheel moving and sweating and, 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 and you're not getting results and going nowhere. This is, we're defining it how you want. So Emmett, you would be like, Jake, dude, I need to get this chest chiseled. Like I'm sick of having, you know, the soft chest. Like I want to get the shoulders. I want to get the abs. You would tell me exactly what you want. You're defining it in your own mind. And because of my expertise of what I know, I'm like, all right, dude, I'm not going to make you look like a CrossFitter when you don't want to. I'm going to make you look like how Emmett wants you to look. And that's where this really came through. And that's why, you know, people, you know, if you've seen the, the transformations or you go and look at our, um, you know, the Instagram or whatnot, I mean, we get people results and it makes them become, you know, billionaire mindset, basically. So do you have, do you have a different program? Uh, if someone, you know, let me get this right. People have body types and mm -hmm. so you might come in and someone's overweight, but they're an ectomorph or someone's overweight, they're a mesomorph. And are you looking at that going, yeah. And they're saying, I want to do this kind of workout. And you're looking at like your body type doesn't dictate that we have to go back and then start over. Is, is that one of the modalities or just some of the things that you what are some of the things you bring to the table for people? Yeah, dude, I'm going to have to, first of all, hire you because it sounds like you know about all the body types and all that. <laughs> um, but, you know, honestly, the first thing about having either a mentor or a coach, whether someone listening right now, you have to understand that mentorship is how you, um, you know, shorten your learning curve, right? You can, I, I put this analogy, this metaphor out all the time. I say you can either trudge through the mud and, and do it yourself and get really dirty and, and it's slow and strenuous, or you can have the mentor that shows you the car, the vehicle and go right through the mud and get there quicker, right. right? It's in every single facet of life. And so for someone like that, I mean, right to the point, every mentor should be real. And I'd be real with every single person that comes in 
if you if this person that's ectomorph coming in which means that they're uh well ecto is more of like really like you know skinny frame endo is more of like uh robust and then meso is kind of like that ideal uh frame you know, and they're telling me that they want to put on 20 pounds in eight weeks. I'm going to be like, all right, bro. Uh, first of all, that's almost impossible. I'm not going to give you false expectations. But secondly, uh, let's do something that's sustainable, which I understand your goals. So if you want to do 20 pounds, let's maybe make that within six months. Right? We could do that. And we're going to have to be intense. We're going to have to actually get these workouts, which I'll make it. Tell me more about what your body wants, what, how your nutrition is. Are you traveling a lot? You're probably not going to be able to do a meal plan if you're traveling. So we're going to make flexible eating so it's a lifelong sustainability and you don't feel like you're failing. That's what we do. It's very unique compared to uh, for each person. We don't we don't have cookie cutter stuff, and that's what gets people results no matter what status, uh, position, uh, body type you are. Yeah, you know, I had that issue. Um, I got on the road, man, and I blew up to like two thirty. I was just chunky. It's like. Oh, I look at pictures, but you don't, you know, it's funny. A lot of people don't know they've gained weight till they look back on pictures and they're mm -hmm. like, that's me. And another thing you said, how it gives you peak performance, because I didn't realize how it, how for me lifting weights, particularly the difference between barbells and dumbbells. When I, when I did dumbbells and I played darts, my game was on point because those fine motor skills got developed along with strength. So, you know, you know, I'm a fan of, of the fountain of youth, and the fountain of youth is typically what we hated in high school, going to the gym <laughs> or just working out. You know, a lot of people don't yeah. get to do it. But, you know, entrepreneurs, that's one of your main focuses. Correct. And entrepreneurs are cats that are on the go. They're opportunists. They're looking for the opportunity. They're trying to get it done. So sometimes their lives are really busy. How is it that you can help them maintain their health? Yeah. Um, so whether you're an entrepreneur, whether you're someone, like you said, traveling a lot, the law of familiar familiarity kicks in. And what that means is that, oh, a little pound here, oh, a little softness here. And you get used to it every day, right? That's why progress photos, if you want to get a transformation, is just as important as having those photos and looking yourself in the mirror every day because then you could see that, right? Because sometimes if you get great results but you didn't take your before photo, you're like, oh, I don't see much change. And then I show you the before photo, you're like, oh, okay, never mind, you're right. Right. <laughs> so with entrepreneurs and, and, and people that are busy and high performers, and I'm sure we got a lot of you listening in right now, you have to understand that your health is directly correlated with your financial success, your business success. If you, just like Emmett said, if you're listening right now and you typically have the 3 p.m. sluggish crash, maybe you get back up after some coffee or whatnot and you keep chugging through the day, know that's not normal. Know that that's something that maybe means that you're, you're not getting as good of sleep. Maybe that you have to take more nutritious uh, uh, either products or food that's actually allowing your body to be energized longer um, because truth be told i want you to think of this right now whatever situation you're in every single day you want to think of your day as a financial asset right if you worked at a hundred percent of that day what does that look like to you and you could maybe write this down you could spend tonight or whenever you know you're listening to this and and, and think about this is your day typically worth $500, maybe, maybe a thousand, 10,000, maybe some of you a hundred thousand dollars a day, who knows? But the thing is, is that if you show up every day at a hundred percent, which means optimal brain clarity, full energy, great rest, you're feeling great, you're confident, everything's going great. You're going to make that money. Well, so let's say 10,000, you show up every day, peak performance, $10,000 a day, 10,000. But as I found most people, maybe some of you are showing up only at 70%, 80%. They have the brain uh, the brain fog. They're they're a little slow on the morning because they they don't have a morning routine. So now they're only getting $7,000 out of that day and it's it's directly correlated. So you're missing out on $3,000 a day. I mean, think about that. How many days are in a year? Over 365? Yeah. You almost have a million dollars you just missed out on. And it's truth be told because if you're having brain uh, fog because you're not eating the right foods, you might not get on that extra call or two at the end of the night to maybe lock in another client. You might be taking more breaks instead of the project that could make you money. You're distracting yourself with 
emails or texting thinking you're busy, but really you're just distracting and putting out fires instead of moving the success needle. Those are the peak performance habits that can take you from one level to the next. And then usually it's not some grandiose thing. It's the tiny little things, the two millimeter rules, they call it, that gets you from a six figure to a seven figure income, seven to eight, eight to nine. You know, now, you just said something or I, I keep hearing a theme in here, which is you've said it probably about five times in the last paragraph, which is peak performance. So what is peak performance mean to you? Because, you know, peak performance can mean, to me, it could mean like, hey, I got everything done by noon. To other people, it's like, hey, I got a marathon day. I, I am up at eight and I don't stop till eight. So I got to go the whole day. So define your representation of peak performance that you're going off for optimal. Yeah, so peak performance is... First of all, what it's not is it's not comparing you to some sort of high-end athlete and saying, well, I'm, I'm never going to be as good looking as them or have a body. It's not comparing yourself to a multi-multi-millionaire or billionaire and saying, well, they did it that way and I can't do it. The thing that we have to all understand is that wherever situation we're in, and we're all in our own situation, our own chapters, don't compare your chapter one to someone else's chapter 20. And there's multiple different books in our life that we might start off with, especially during a time like this where it's quarantine. And, you know, as we're, we're speaking right now on this and people are starting a new book in their life where they're starting a new business, they have to find a new side income. Your chapter one will be different. But the thing that we all have to understand is there's always another level. There's always another level. And, and, and the truth behind that is look at someone that has it all, such as, Bill Gates or, you know, mentor, my mentor, Tony Robbins, right? I, I coach some of his speakers and why are they still doing what they're doing? Even though they have everything, it's because they know they have another level, another level to give another level to grow, never another level to have impact in this world longer. So peak performance comes down to getting to that next level in your own life. And what does that mean? It means having morning routines that set up your day for success. So you're not going through the motion. You know, Emmett, there's a, there's a statistic that says that by age 35, 95% of your thoughts and your actions are subconscious. Meaning that if you're 35 right now, you don't mean, that doesn't mean you're screwed. Don't worry. But what it's saying is that 95% of what you're doing, which is subconscious, meaning you don't even think about it. Like if I'm looking at my phone 300 times a day and I don't even realize it, that's a subconscious thing already because it's just a habit. 95% of what you're doing. So if you're constantly feeling like you're stuck or you feel like you're in a box, that's just because you've conditioned yourself, but there is ways to get out of it. Don't think yeah. you're screwed over. If you're young, know that you should start preventing that now. If you're older, know that it's still fixed, right? So peak performance is really that idea of using the habits, the different, you know, the eating, that certain, taking certain products to help with brain clarity, to focus longer to, to not get distracted. And that's where you're going to start to have a billionaire lifestyle. Have you ever read the book, The Greatest Salesman in the World? No, I haven't. But tell me about it. You need to read that. That's all I want to tell you about. You need to read that by Og Mandino. Okay. Oh, yeah. I've, I've, I've heard of Og Mandino. I mean, uh, you got to read, read The Greatest Salesman in the World. This would be great for you. Uh, is, that, is that like the the greatest showman in the movie? With uh... no, 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 stop, 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 stop. <laughs> no, this is a book that my uncle told me to read years ago, and uh, and the reason I said that is because you're talking about sub subconscious programming, and it actually details how uh, about it's a story about the greatest salesman in the world from ancient times, mm. and it dictates how he got that way. But wow. it gives you principles to do it. So you don't read the book and put it down. You read the book for a week, and then you do the action. You apply and, it. Yeah, and you do that for about 30 to 21 to 30 days. So it's, it's a great book to read. And yeah, that's the, next, that's the next on my list. I love that stuff. Yeah. So what, what is your routine? What, what habits have you broken and reformed so that you are living in your optimal peak performance? Oh yeah, man. It all starts off with the morning. I, you know, even I think it was just over a year and a half ago, I didn't have a morning routine. I was just kind of, oh, I don't need that. I'm just getting up and work, hustle. Right. But what happens is that people 
get caught up with, like I mentioned, putting out the fires in the day. They, they don't have the intentions of what is best for you. So the first thing you're going to naturally do is find the intentions of what's best for other people, AKA answering text messages, responding to emails. You may think that's helping your business or your, whatever you're doing, but truth be told, you're actually just serving other people before you could serve yourself, which is giving from a, a cup that is not overflowing. And over time, if you keep giving from that cup of yourself, which is your energy, your worth, your confidence, you're going to start running low. And that's why you might hit a plateau. You might hit that burnout feeling because you're not serving yourself. And if some of you right now are saying, oh, well, um, Jake, I'm, you know, I'm, I, I have to take care of my kids. Like, I mean, times are so stressful. I got to I got to do this for them and that. I'm all with you. I've worked with single moms going to nasty divorces. I work with busy, busy fathers that have to show 18 hours in a day of work to supply the family. But all I ask is, especially when we talk about the fitness side, we'll talk about the morning routine is 10 minutes of a morning routine. This is a bookend to your, to your life. You have the morning routine and you can't see my, if you're listening on the audio right now, you won't be able to see my hands, but you have a morning routine, which is one bookend and you have your night routine and the books in between are your life and it's either organized or it's chaotic if because there's going to be environmental stresses and, and winds and rain and, and 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 if you don't have that stability from those routines you're going to get knocked over and then that's where you know Emmett, you mentioned dude months went by and i realized i was 30 pounds 50 pounds whatever it was overweight i realized that i'm, I'm not feeling the best i am in that's because the morning routine set up your standards. So what I do is um, I do a morning routine. that's 10 minutes. If you don't have 10 minutes, you don't have a life. Let's just be real. And that life is going to be, <laughs> that, that life, that life is going to be owned by someone else. I'm just saying it right to the yeah. point. Everyone has 10 minutes, right? And it's just to keep it really like, you know, just brief. If, you know, if anyone wants to know the details, like obviously you could search up on my, my page or whatnot and see the detailed part of it, but it's, you know, getting into a good state. So I have one of those little mini trampolines, right? You know, when I saw Tony Robbins doing this every single day, I realized it wasn't some sort of 90s workout plan anymore, and it's something to get you in a peak performance. You jump on this trampoline for one minute, I tell you, your state changes like that. You have blood flow going to your brain. You have your lymphatic system, which only can be pumped by movement, which keeps you from being sick. That's why people get sick when they sit around a lot because there's no lymphatic drainage. You know so what I use? Go ahead. I do a Tabata workout with a 20 and a 40 pound kettlebell. I do two yeah. Tabatas. So that's about uh, eight minutes. Good Lord. It beats me up. <laughs> and for people listening in, a Tabata is eight rounds of 20 seconds of an exercise and then 10 second rest. See, so you're doing, there you go. <laughs> so you're doing that with a 40 count pound kettlebell, which I don't even know what kind of workouts you could do with that. No, I switched between the 40 and the 20 because that 40, the 20 is the warm up, And then the second round is the 80. I mean, the first round is the 20 pound kettlebell. And then the second round is the 40, which I usually don't get. I usually switch back to the 20. Because that thing is a monster. It's like trying to lift yeah. a car when you're in the morning. All right. Let me ask you this. How can people reach you? What, you know, I see your Instagram. Like I said, dudes, don't let your woman see this dude. Anyway, so <laughs> website, Instagram, Facebook, Instagram TV, whatever you got. And do you do any virtual coaching yeah so obviously i have all the platforms out there but just like anything else i want to make sure that you just go to one because i don't want to overwhelm you right and this is okay. something that maybe you all you all could learn here too when you tell people about your stuff is just just go on instagram at jake havron it's my first and last name and you're going to first of all see inspirational informational and educational stuff on there which i hope it helps you Second off, if you came from this podcast, send me a message. Send me a message and, and ask like a, a question. I'd love to help you. Um, and yes, you'll see right on my Instagram, you'll see where you can apply for personal coaching with me. I love to just be able to, especially if you came from this podcast, I'd love to just be able to give you some free value, coach you, and uh, also see if this is something that we could help transform and define your body. Yeah, I'm on your, I'm on your uh, 
Instagram right now. Click that, click that link, man. man you, you know, <laughs> you're very photogenic. Every, you know, I'm old enough now. I'm secure enough. I can actually say that. But you know, you, you got it going on, homie. <laughs> I appreciate that. All right, now, so, what do you think about the future? What can people do in this moment? You know, I know that everyone's sitting at home, and I actually, it happened to me the first two weeks of COVID. I sat on the couch. I thought I was going to get bed sores. I sat on the couch so long, but then my, you know, it's just me. Actually, I needed it because I had been on the road for three, three months Wow! between California, Las Vegas and Chicago, <laughs> just going up at three in the morning, not really going to bed till like eight thirty, nine 9 o'clock at night. I was just going. So when this happened, I was like, cool. They're like, stay at home. But, you know, just like inertia, a body at rest tends to stay at rest. So mm -hmm. you have to get it moving. And I got it moving. I started riding my bike. I started doing the kettlebells again. started doing deadlifts. I was, oh, okay. Doing, I was just doing five by five deadlifts. You keep in good form, right? Yeah, I'm old. I got some uh, mobility issues. But you know how it is. <sighs> Try my best. So what would you... What would you say to someone who just needs a little bit of motivation? What's three exercises that somebody can start with today and then they can contact you to tune that right up? Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, right now, whether you're listening during this to the quarantine or in the future, I mean, exercises at home are most ideal. It takes a couple minutes. You have no excuse that you can't get to the gym or whatever. And honestly, like you mentioned with that Tabata, if you guys search up just Tabata, um, timer on YouTube, on, on Google and, and do three exercises on the bottom. So it'll be like, I think 12, 12 minutes total at most with some rest in between. You can do, uh, just the simple push ups, right? I know everyone knows push ups, but actually do it. Push ups. If, if it's a little struggling after a while, get on the knees, keep the, keep the glutes tight and the core in tight. And you're going to be able to still do more push ups, do the squats, even though if you have really tight hips from sitting, you're going to start to loose, loosen up those hips, trying it out, right? And the yeah. last one is get, get on the ground and, and get in a plank. Plank is the number one core exercise. I know when I say plank, a lot of people cringe like Emmett over here. He's like, oof. But plank will help tighten up that waist. It'll, it'll pull everything in. So if you have that struggle where, you know, your stomach looks kind of, you know, all over the place and it doesn't, you know, the plank basically gets a belt, which is your transverse abdominis. That's your deep internal core. And it sucks everything in tight and the plank emphasizes on that. So you do those three exercises on a Tabata, less than 12 minutes, you're going to get results. And the biggest thing from that is you're implementing atomic habits. You don't need to be in the gym hours a day. No, just do the small stuff. And you're going to realize you want to do more because you feel good. But start with the small. Don't get all grandiose over here. And you guys are going to start to feel a lot more results. Now, I'm going to go one other thing because we talked about the physical activity and the mindset. But there's one topic we didn't quite hit. And everybody struggles with this because there's so much information and disinformation out there. And it's also what we're going to go to is... I have my own ideas that is um, kind of systemic to who you are culturally. I'll explain that in a bit. I'll explain that afterward, which is food. What are the foods that you would say, hey, if you're really trying to target, get energy and, you know, lose body fat and stay healthy, what foods would you suggest? Yeah. So the first thing that makes people eat more food is because they're not drinking enough water. I'm just be real. And that's the simplest thing. If I could tell you right now, this, there's a study that shows this, that if you drink 20 ounces of water, right when you woke up every morning, it has to be 20 or more. It has this thing called a thermogenic effect. You burn up to 16% more calories, which equals fat burning. Wouldn't you be excited? You'd be like, I drink water and I'm burning fat. That's what happens. So drink 20 ounces of water. But what it's happening is it's also cutting cravings. Okay, so drink that water, but for food, you have to aim on, you know, whether you're going to do intermittent fasting or not, I'm sure a lot of you have heard of that, you have to aim on eating a lot of bulk of veggies, 
with the protein and the fats and carbs will be in there. I'm not the person that's going to say no carbs, you know, no fats, like keto, all that crap. I don't do that. <laughs> right. But what I'll say is for people that need volume to fill up their stomach, especially if you're used to eating a lot of food, a lot of McDonald's, let's just be real. You know, those, like if you do a salad, with the protein on top, some cut up chicken or steak. You know, I, I like to use like salsa with a little bit of like uh, um, the olive oil and, or dressing. That way you don't douse it with a lot of dressing. Man, you're gonna feel so full, but you're only having half the calories you normally would. And now you're tricking your brain to start, you know, believing that it's getting enough calories, which it is, but you're, because you're used to eating like a thousand calorie meals, now you just ate at 500 and you feel twice as full. That's a quick little tip that maybe you guys could start using and you'll, you'll start to see a lot more results and be like, dang, Jake, <laughs> this actually works. So Jake, are you still in the hospital? Are you still in the medical field? I am currently not. So I graduated my nursing degree and then from there I just went right into chasing my passion of uh, keeping people at hospital by training them and coaching them. Well, that's so awesome. Well, sir, I want to thank you so much for being on the Billionaire Lifestyle Podcast. Yeah, thank you so much. It's been such a blessing. I hope someone here right now can change their life from these small little tips and now being mean more than the world to me. So thank you for having me here, Emmett. Awesome. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this is what I promised. I said I'm going to show you how you are a billionaire. It's really simple. It started a long, long time ago for some of you. And if you're listening to my voice, it started at your inception which means there was a man, there was a woman, and I'm just using that because that's historically how we came to this planet. They shared some information. He gave it something to her. Now, when you give a woman something, she makes something of it. If you bring her groceries, she makes you a meal. If you give her a house, she makes you a home. If you give her what I'm talking about, she makes you a replicated human. So, he gave her something, she took it in, it got with her parts, the cosmic dance from God said, go ahead, make that happen. Two became four, four became eight, eight became 16 for 30 days, and at the 30 day mark, you were over a billion cells and you weren't even on the planet yet. So you are a billionaire. You are comprised of these things called cells. Now, I'm gonna relate it to you like this, cell, self wonder where it comes from because you are a slave to yourselves which started out and made you it's synergistic but here's one thing it starts with love and you have to love yourself so when you get out the shower get out the bathtub dry yourself off drop the towel go over to the mirror i don't care if you're overweight if you're too skinny if you're got an odd shape go to that mirror and look at your naked god body because that's the body you came to this earth with and it is beautiful and i need you to appreciate it i need you to get close to the mirror and i need you to look at your eyes and i need you to get really close and look at that little thing that squints down and opens up as light comes in because that looks very much like the nebulae in the sky we are all fractal as above so below and when you meet someone else with those nebulae in their eye, like the one in the sky, treat them with love, honor, and respect. Till next time, deuces!